Thanks for joining me today. I am Chris, and I am back. Back again. Tell your friends. T really, tell your friends, because the numbers on, on this show is actually abysmal. Which is sad, because this game is actually really, really good. But, I, anyways, we'll continue on. On the last episode, we, um, we finished up the, the, going down the route um, of the newspaper articles and the, uh, the TMI and all the other websites having altered um, articles. Uh, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, sometimes for the moderate. Either way, they were being altered. Everybody we talked to died. It was probably my fault. I It, it happens. I mean, whatever. Anyways, now we're going down the opposite side, going to the Flower Mansion, and now following the trail of Turing's robotics. Now, the thing is, one of the last people we talked to, Nanya, actually mentioned flowers. <sighs> so what's uh hey uh hey Turing um what's wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. I was wool gathering. Wool gathering. What? I have never heard that term before. What? What the hell? I is see that? we've arrived at the Melody Flora's residence. It's quite impressive. I know. It's almost like she's super rich. But that's to be expected, considering that she is still the majority owner of the Flower Cybernetics Group, despite retiring from day-to-day -day operations at the company. I wonder how she and Hayden first began working together. I don't know. I have a feeling we're going to find out, and hopefully I won't wind up dead. Because a lot of people I've talked to have wound up dead. I, it, I don't know. Sorry. Back on task. Yes, I know, Turing. Now, uh, a little bit of a of a heads up for those who who uh, who are just joining me and haven't ha ha had a chance to watch the series before. Um, Hayden, his create Turing's creator, who by the way Turing is a more human than robot type being. Uh, he died very recently, in fact, and we just found out how he died or that he died. So, if Turing on this this trail is a bit absent-minded kind of like whatever it's because he's still working through some things is there anything you'd like to know before we head inside maybe let's see give me the rundown of this the flower cybernetics what can you tell me about melody did yannick say he and melody had a falling out let's go ahead and head in the most important information that we need and that both of us need, uh, you and I, are, are going to need, is going to be this. Flower Cybernetics, from what we've gathered already, is a robotics corporation. The, there might be some details here and there, but nothing that we would learn now. Melody, on the other hand, again, we might learn some basics, but nothing too important. But what we really need to know is this he did and i can't shine much light on that i know that system one worked with flower to help develop the first operating systems for the direct link virtual reality implants so perhaps it happened during that time again again with the vr i mean i love it and in anything that gets me any closer to you know our lovely lovely ramona still it's this it's they keep bringing up vr also, Flower eventually went with a different company for future models of the implant, but there was never any public talk of a personal falling out between the heads of the companies. Alright, well, that's good. We don't have to worry about that. I'll scrape the mesh for more rumors, but they'll only be that. Rumors. I can do my best to parse fact from fiction, but it blurs too much for me to be sure what's real. Yeah, pretty much. At this uh, again, once we start talking to uh, to Melody here, we're gonna find out the information that we need to know and ascertain. Now, I only pulled that up because that's what we needed. Now, I personally am gonna go through these things. Yeah, but I will meet you inside. The company is largely successful on a global scale, despite continued legislative movement against extensive cybernetic use, especially brain implants. There it is. That is the important thing that we need to know. I don't know. I it it's not we we know it's important. We just don't know why it's important yet. <laughs> yeah, 
You're a bear. You are a bear. You're a bear with a bow tie. You're a bear with a bow tie and... You're a bear with a bow tie and a beret, okay. You know what? You know what? I you know what? I don't I don't even want to know. I I don't I don't even want to know. We meant no disrespect. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> He's Chewbacca. Hmm. Well, kind of. Your guess is as good as mine. My guess is that one he's a He's one of the modified uh, cybernetic things. Uh, he can mentally, uh, he can probably telepathically with that hat talk to Melody. Mine says we can go in. Should. We? Hell yeah, let's go in. Oh wow, swanky. It's very swanky. The bear, the, the bear throws it to like the far left side of confusing, but yes, very swanky. I've been trying to increase my usage of colloquialisms. Swanky's not the first one I would start with, but okay. Is Swanky too out of date? I think so. I. It's certainly before my time. Then yeah, it's definitely out of date. Oh, Miss Flores! Excuse us for the intrusion. My name is Turing, and. Oh, I know who you are. Oh, you do? Well, that's good. That saves us a lot of time. Hey, I can explain. I know you don't like Dr. Fairlight very much, but I assure you there is a situation. Fairlight? Hmm. I didn't realize Hayden's research had become a charity case. Charity? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's putting Fair Fairlight down. I like her. Though I suppose little boy Yannick will throw money at anything that raises his profile on the mesh. Wait, you know Hayden? Also, we actually only just met Dr. Fairlight yesterday. Oh, that's too bad. Now Pat won't have to eat you. <laughs> oh, I really like her. Don't worry, Pat. I taste delicious. Just Throw on some honey mustard, maybe some uh, some pepper. What? Though I'm not sure your gears would have been good for his digestion. Mm -mm, nope. Actually, madam, I'm not comprised of gears. God damn it, Turing! Listen, okay, calm down. She's. Well, either way, he's on a diet. Good job, Pat. This philosophy is how I lead my life. Sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear, well, he eats you. Look, lady, that's that's kind of rude to Pat, okay? Are Do you going to eat Pat? Not really. Look, I don't have all day to entertain you, Turing, nor your new friend. Not even for Hayden. You don't have time to waste if you're going to find him, either. Uh, about that. Right. Okay. Um. This is the usual usual stick where I kind of look around the room, see if there's anything of interest, and then I'll be right back. I wasn't aware you knew the scientific name of the species. Look, he's a white bear. I would have hoped he's a polar bear. Ooh, has my interest in proper nomenclature started to rub off on you? No. Plenty. Have you heard of a Kermode bear, also known as a spirit bear? Or he could be a white phase black bear, or even a Pizzly. Okay, one's a ghost, uh, one's a an anomaly, and what the hell's a Pizzly? But he's not. It's a polar bear. If you were one of Fairlight's worker bees, you wouldn't have made it through the door. So why are you here to badger me about poor Hayden? Well, because... <laughs> Let's see. You have me at a disadvantage, Ms. Flores. You seem far ahead of us on this matter. Just call me Melody, darling. And of course, 
but I'll share a secret or two with you. Any secret I know at this point is more than I got. I have so many questions. Do you know what's happened to Hayden? I wish I didn't. Maybe you don't want to either. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so... She knows. How she knows? Look, she's rich and powerful. I don't care to want to know the details. Please, Melody. Any information you might have. We haven't had access to any of his research notes and couldn't track down any collaborators he may have been working with. Perhaps if we know more, we might be able to nail down a solid motive. Well, I don't know if I can speculate on that beyond the usual corporate infighting. True. And again, Hayden was part of high, a high up in Parallax, and at this point, we've talked to both. We've talked to uh, the only the only company we have yet to talk to with Parallax. We've talked to Flowers, we've talked to Fairlight, and we've talked to all number of people in the uh, lower the lower echelons. Not that Parallax is known for that, of course. We had been catching up recently, and he mentioned feelings of being watched. He started to worry he had been discussing your development with the wrong people. Hmm. When he stopped returning my calls, and now that you've shown up with a total stranger, it becomes clear what happened. I... I see. Can you tell us anything else about his disappearance? So this is, this is interesting, and I just now noticed it. Melody is not talking to me. She's talking directly to Turing. She knows Turing's specs. She knows how he's more human than robot. I am just a stranger. I'm just kind of sitting there trying not to get eaten by a bear, hoping I can probably get some of these strawberries. Like, just some super delicious strawberries right there. Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. I've been around long enough to know what's coincidence and what isn't. Mm-hmm. We were hoping you might be able to shine some light on my origins. Fairlight mentioned that you had worked with Hayden in the past. I see Hayden didn't neglect curiosity in your personality makeup. Well, you and I haven't properly met, but considering how often Hayden badgered me for design schematics of Flower's latest neural implants, I might as well be your aunt. Neural implants. Again, that comes up. The neural implants are the stuff for the VR. It was what caused... It is possibly the cause of what happened with the, uh, the newspaper articles being altered. And now, Hayden is interested in the neural implants for the creation of Turing. Look, if Ramona turns out to be the big bad at, at the end of the game, I'd, I'd, I'd let her. Just, I'd let her. We'll go with that. I wouldn't mind being an aunt. Even to a blue-headed robot. He is adorable, I'm I know. I'm touched, Melody. Well then, I'm willing to answer your questions. For now. So, let's see. Hmm. How did you help Hayden with Turing? She kind of already mentioned it with the uh, with the schematics. Um, whatever. What's the story between you and Fairlight? I don't care. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it, it'll be... um. It's not important to the case. It might shed some light, but it's not important. I think that's everything we need to know. So, first off... Indeed. I don't see the connection between your company and Hayden's research into machine sapiens. Oh, Hayden wasn't researching machine sapiens. At least not primarily. Okay. Not to diminish the importance of your creation, Turing. But it's best you know the truth. Hayden is mainly interested in developing a way to transfer human consciousness into a machine matrix. And that would cause a shit ton of stir. For the rich, for the old, for the desperate, for the destitute. You can see why neural implants would obviously be an integral part of that. Oh, 
I didn't realize. Hmm. So, let's see. How would Turing's development help with the digitizing of the human mind? Interesting. Uh, could you elaborate your involvement? Hayden wasn't in invested in Turing's development? No, that's not quite it. Remember, remember, Turing himself is a bottom-up AI. He's a learning robot. So, theoretically, if Turing is able to be created and grow and be a human, ish, be human-like, then it would make sense that in some way or form, the human consciousness, which could be considered as ones and ones and zeros, could be transmuted into something like Turing. And then a person could pass away but still kind of live on. Interesting hypothesis, weird interactions, and obviously it's way into the realm of science, science uh, fantasy, so whatever. The concept of transferring the human mind into a computer has been an attractive goal for decades. Eons, even. Functional immortality is powerful lure. I can see that. The brain is an immensely complicated machine, and even though we know the right buttons to push to make pictures show up, we still can't replicate the entire thing as a technological construct. Even with the virtual reality implants, we're really just relying on the brain's ability to make sense of nonsensical signals. Hmm. Interesting. So Hayden decided the best way to make a machine more like the human brain would be to work in the opposite direction. Instead of mimicking how the human brain worked, he started writing code that mimicked the functioning of the human mind. The learning aptitude, the uh, inquisitive nature, the ability to paint. Yeah. Think of it like convergent evolution. Two species adapt in similar ways, but on completely different continents. Hayden is a crack programmer when it comes to information collating. It's why Parallax hired him when they did. So he wrote a bunch of self-modifying learning algorithms that were, <laughs> frankly, baffling and let them loose. He let them- wait, 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 he let them loose? Poke and prod them here and there to make sure they value the same things humans do. And we eventually end up with you. Okay, so all that makes sense, and this does answer a few questions that that come to that have come to mind within the you know having played having played this game and the knowledge of Turing and everything. But there is one thing that still eludes us, but I do have a hypothesis. Turing was not the first. In fact, it's mentioned pr it's mentioned prior that he does have a sister, an older sister. We, nobody knows what happened to her. Interesting. And by her, I mean it's a robot that wants to be called her. And it's okay. It's a, it's a... Hayden never revealed any of this to me. But he probably did it to his previous creations, who are MIA. I imagine he's pretty tight-lipped. You were the first prototype he considered a real success, and he was afraid of contaminating your development before he had a chance to make good observations. Mm hmm Let's see. Now... Now again, these two are in very- are very important questions, but we've- er but- We've kind of already established what's going, what's what her answers are going to be. What's your involvement? Well, I let him know about the specs of the blah 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 blah. Hayden wasn't invested in Turing's development. It, no, it's that's not quite it. So if I'm going to go through these, and if there's anything different or relevant, 
I'll put it in if otherwise. I'm gonna go back into. I'll be, I'll be back. In fact, he was preparing to publish his findings involving Turing. And I know it's going to make one heck of a splash in the scientific community. See, the most impressive part about you, Turing, is that you're surprisingly stock. Hold on. It's true. It, it is true. Hold on. He, he's a low-tech model. Holy hell. Turing himself, for as advanced as, as an AI as he is, he... He's even mentioned it himself. Most of his stuff is offloaded onto looking up information. He doesn't have that many, that much hard space, internal hard space. He doesn't have a lot of tech. I mean, yes, you know, comparatively to other the my stuff, yeah, he's heads and leagues and leagues above it. But stock, really. I assure you, Melody, my construction involves only the latest and greatest in ROM prototype technology. True. Exactly. You're not off the shelf, but you're still just a souped up ROM. More or less like every other one out there. Your personality algorithms are impressive, but they don't require some new space age technology to work. He's a stock model. He Turing would be the line of there would be a line of Turing's on the shelf that you can you can just kind of pick up and browse and just yeah. Hayden is going to propose that human consciousness transference does not require special brain-like hardware architecture, but merely the right software wrapper to interface with the hardware. Much like how you function. Much like much how the human the human brain functions. Hmm. I suppose that is correct. Still, my personality matrices do take up substantial amounts of my processing power. Yeah? Wouldn't custom hardware have capabilities that better serve such a demanding specialized task? Sure. There's still plenty of reason in trying to make a computer that works just like a human brain. Efficiency is an important part of that. But if Hayden can emulate the human mind in existing technology, it means we can start the immortality now, rather than waiting for hardware to catch up with Hayden's software. True. Frankly, I'm not terribly interested in living forever, but there's more than enough people who are. Fairlight. Myself. Thank you for this, Melody. I understand so little of my origins. Well, I'm sorry I don't know more of the specifics. Hayden kept me up to date on his progress, but only in the vaguest of ways. If you can hunt down his notes, I'm sure they'll tell you more. Of course, we'll keep looking. Now, perhaps we could ask some other questions? Sure, sure. Again, I don't care between what happened between you and Fairlight. However, it is always important to ask the questions, even though if we know the answers. Because otherwise, you know, we can always be wrong. Things Fairlight. were going great. But after the first model sold like gangbusters, Yannick tried to get into bed with me. Literally. I turned him down, very politely, I might add, and then, suddenly, all of the cooperation between our companies dried up. Look, Melody, I like you right now. I can only imagine what you look like and how you were in your heyday. I'd be smitten, too. But unfortunately, my heart belongs to Ramona. We've been at it back and forth ever since. I'd be damned careful about trusting him if I were you. Look, lady, he woke up in my I was I woke up, he was in my room, he started talking to me and this and I'm here now. So I okay. I I'm with you on that. He's a snake and he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Still, I suppose if he tried again now, I might not turn him down. <laughs> More information than I need to know. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. 
It would be fun to needle him about me still having my own company when he doesn't have his. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. I like you. Good. I can get back to my retirement. Thank you for your time, Melody. We'll be in touch later. Oh, one more piece of information for you, if you'd like it. I, yes, all information is important and I am lost. I've got the contact info for a Vincent Mensa, who I think might be of help to you. Okay, Vincent. Vincent was Mensa. working more closely with Hayden inside Parallax. Mostly on his company approved research on data collating algorithms for the mesh. Is this our link to the to the issues that we had with the uh, the articles being altered? I don't know. I'll send him a message and ask him to meet you somewhere. He owes me a favor anyway, and might be able to give you some more information on anything else Hayden may have been working on. That would be fantastic, Melody. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I mean. Perhaps Golden Gate Park. Be careful, Turing. I don't like Fairlight stench all over this scenario. Don't show him too many of your cards. Cards? This euphemism is unfamiliar to me. Yeah, <sighs> I can explain. Yeah. Don't tell him anything if you can. Fairlight is more dangerous the more he's informed. Thank you, Aunt Melody. Wish us luck. Aunt Melody just seems so weird. I like it. Okay, so that'll end it for this today's episode. Uh, we did learn a lot of interesting things, and any chance that I get, any chance that I get to, you know, you know, stretch my brain muscles and think of hypotheticals for science and whatnot is always entertaining. Uh, so to re um, to kind of sum up what we've been doing here, according to Melody, owner uh, still owner of the Flower uh, Incorporation, blah blah blah, um, Turing was a step in the direction of creating immortality within humans by transmuting their brain into a robot. Therefore, their living contents will still remain. You know, the brain in the jar scenario, the fu the cyborg robot things those are all you know fan fantasy aspects of the same thing this is kind of a bit more of a possibility so now that we know that hayden actually not only cr possibly created it but he was on the steps and on the verge of talking of making a big breakthrough it would bring a lot of unsavory people those that wanted immortality for themselves only those that wanted immortality for everybody and pretty much anybody that ever that's ever lived because everybody in some way or form at one point wants immortality whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing it you know it depends either way that's uh that's where we're at now we're gonna go talk to uh talk to vincent and then i don't know that being said thanks for joining me i hope you enjoy the show i hope you enjoy read only memories i hope you're enjoying the uh you know this the channel don't forget to leave a like leave a comment and of course hit that subscribe button because i'm gonna be uploading every day at 11 a.m central time it's like you know you, you know where i'm gonna be i'm gonna be here one view eight million views i'm gonna be doing my thing and of course i hope you have a good day later